the greatest country in history, the richest and most powerful. It became the most powerful because its view of rights made it the most moral. It was the country of individualism and personal independence. Today, however, we are seeing the rise of principled immorality in this country. We are seeing a total abandonment by the intellectuals and the politicians of the moral principles on which the United States was founded. We are seeing the complete destruction of the concept of rights. The original American idea has been virtually wiped out, ignored as if it had never existed. The rule now is for politicians to ignore and violate men's actual rights while arguing about a whole list of rights never dreamed of in this country's founding documents. Rights which require no earning, no effort, no action at all on the part of the recipient. <coughs> you are entitled to something the politicians say simply because it exists and you want or need it, period. You are entitled to be given it by the government. Where does the government get it from? What does the government have to do to private citizens, to their individual rights, to their real rights, in order to carry out the promise of showering free services on the people? The answers are obvious. The newfangled rights wipe out real rights and turn the people who actually create the goods and services involved into servants of the state. The Russians tried this exact system for many decades. Unfortunately, we have not learned from their experience. Yet the meaning of socialism, and that's the right name for government-controlled health care, the meaning of socialism is clearly evident in any field at all. You don't need to think of health care as a special case. It is just as apparent if the government were to proclaim a universal right to food, or to a vacation, or to a haircut. I mean a right in the new sense, not that you're free to earn these things by your own effort and trade, but that you have a moral claim to be given these things free of charge, with no action on your part, simply as handouts from a benevolent government. How would these alleged new rights be fulfilled? Take the simplest case. You're born with a moral right to hair care, let us say. <laughs> Provided by a loving government free of charge to all who want or need it. What would happen under such a moral theory? Now, I've been advised to cut my talk in half because they're running late. So I'll just synopsize. All right, this is what I had written originally. Haircuts are free like the air we breathe. So some people show up every day for an expensive new styling. The government pays out more and more. Barbers revel in the huge new incomes, and the profession starts to grow ravenously. Bald men start to come in droves for free hair implantations. A school of fancy, specialized eyebrow pluckers develops. It's all free. The government pays. The dishonest barbers are having a field day, of course, but the point is so are the honest ones. They are working and spending like mad, trying to give every customer his heart's desire, which is a millionaire's worth of special hair care and services. The government starts to scream, the budget is out of control, suddenly directives erupt. We must limit the number of barbers, we must limit the time spent on haircuts, we must limit the permissible type of hairstyles. Bureaucrats begin to split hairs about how many hairs a barber should be allowed to split. <laughs> a new computerized office of records filled with inspectors and red tape shoots up. Some barbers, it seems, are getting too rich still. They must be getting more than their fair share of the national hair. So barbers have to start applying for certificates of need in order to buy razors while peer review boards are established to assess every stylist's work, both the honest, the dishonest, and the overly honest alike, to make sure that no one is too bad or too good or too busy or too unbusy. Now, in the end, there are lines of wretched customers waiting for their chance to be routinely scalped by bored, hog-tied hair cutters, some of whom remember dreamily the old days when somehow everything was so much better. Now, do you think the situation would be improved 
by having hair care cooperatives organized by the government, having them engage in managed competition, managed by the government, in order to buy haircut insurance from companies controlled by the government. Now, if this is what would happen under government-managed hair care, what else can possibly happen? It's already starting to happen under the idea of health care as a right. Health care in the modern world is a complex scientific technological service. How can anybody be born with a right to such a thing? <clears throat> Under the American system, you have a right to health care very simply if you can pay for it. In other words, if you can earn it by your own action and effort. But nobody has the right to the services of any professional individual or group simply because he wants them and desperately needs them. The very fact that he needs these services so desperately is the proof that he had better respect the freedom, the integrity, and the rights of the people who provide them. <laughs>